Hi guys, welcome to today's lessons, the first in the series of the non-linear relationships. Um, so today we're going to be looking at the quadratic function, aka the parabola. So the quadratic function has the equation um, y equals something squared plus or minus a number. So we've got that sort of generalized equation there. So basically, if the x has a squared on the end of it, um, it's going to be a parabola. We've already looked at things such as y equals, um, let's say, 2x plus 1, where x has no power or has a power of 1. So the minute it has a power of 2, such as 2x squared plus 1, then that becomes a parabola. The number in front of the x squared is quite similar to the number in front of the x when we had the straight line, which determined how steep um, our parabola is going to be. So I guess if we have an x squared question like this, um, the x squared kind of looks like like that. It's the average kind of gradient, I guess. But if it's a 2x squared, you're going to get a steeper parabola. If you had something like um, y equals a half x squared, um, or whatever it's going to be, it's going to be less steep like that. Um, the plus number also works in the same um, regard as what happens with the straight line, which was the y-intercept. Um, you can see that this, these ones that I've drawn here, they all cut it at zero, so there wouldn't be a y-intercept, or there'll be a y-intercept of zero. But if I had one that had, for example, y equals x squared plus 1, what would happen there is it would cut it at 1. Okay? Um, and ones that we do, we are always symmetrical about the y-axis. So it actually tells the turning point, for example, there. Um, well, the ones I'm, I'm looking at at the moment. Obviously, this one isn't symmetrical around the y-axis. It's symmetrical around the value of around about x equals 2.5, thereabouts. But you can see what's going on. Um, they're, they're all positive gradients, by the way. If I had a negative one like this one, you can see that this parabola is upside down. That would be the graph of y equals minus x squared plus something. Okay, And that means it's going to be an unhappy face. Okay? It's pointing downwards, as I guess the straight line graph. Um, now, for most cases, you'll be asked to either graph the uh, the parabola, and then you might be asked to ask information off it. For example, um, what is the maximum point um, for this graph here? Uh, well, maximum point was when x is equals 2.5. The maximum point would be y equals 6. You know, it might ask you what is the maximum value of x. You know, those types of things there, um, which would be five there, maximum value of x. Um, those are the kind of questions they can ask you. If they ask you to draw it, it's really straightforward. You just construct a table of values like you would normally do. Um, for this case, you'll be doing between 0 and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And just like normal, you would simply substitute those values into the particular equation and then basically sketch it. Knowing that it's going to be a curved graph, it's not going to be a straight line graph. Okay, let's have a look at this question. Draw the graph of y equals x squared plus 1. Now, in this case, they haven't told us to use any particular x values. If you're not told, then generally speaking, like you would do with a straight line graph, I would use negative 2 to positive um, 2. The more points you use, the more accurate your graph's going to be. Um, but certainly negative 2 to positive 2 would be okay. Um, making sure if you put negative 2 into your calculator, you'd be doing it like that before you square it, because remember, if you square a negative number, it becomes positive. That would become positive 4 plus 1 is positive 5. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 squared plus 1 is 1. 1 squared plus, um, which is 1 plus 1 is 2. And 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. And what you're going to see, um, that they're going to reflect at a certain point. And generally speaking, um, the point that's in the middle, of that is kind of going to be your point of um, reflection, I guess, or your um, symmetry. I would now, like I would normally do, put my axes here, my x, my y, making sure that we're accurate across both axes. Um, one, two, three, four, five, just like you would do on any normal graph that you've done. 
And then once you've got that, you can now plot your point. So negative two, five, negative one, two, zero, one, one, two, and two, five. And you can see that it's kind of going to look like this. Oops, my apologies. Not sure what happened there. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to finish that off there. You can see, put my little arrows there. And like last time, you'd label the graph y equals x squared plus 1. Okay, so pretty straightforward. To be honest, guys, I couldn't give you any graph, and you should be able to graph it. Um, just if you're really unsure what the graph looks like, you might put a couple of extra x values, like you might maybe put minus 3 to positive 3, etc. But I probably should know it looks like a happy face. So once you get those dots there, you should know what it's going to look like. Um, okay, that's a very basic question. Next one. The area of a rectangular closure of x of length x meters is given by the formula a equals x brackets 7 minus x. The graph of this formula is shown below. What is the area of the enclosure when x is 1 meter? Okay, it sounds really fancy, but all you're looking at is there's x, there's my area. So when x equals 1, area equals 6 meters squared. That's it. Pretty straightforward. Um, what is the area of the enclosure when x is 5 meters? Again, I'm going to go to 5. Up here, I'm going to go across. We get 10. So 10 meters squared. What is the enclosure's air, um, length in order to have a maximum area? My maximum area would certainly be up here. Okay, um, now it's going to be a little bit above 12, isn't it? Um, but if I come down here, I'm going to look at seeing what is my value of x. My value would be 3.5. And what is the maximum area of the enclosure? Okay, so in that case, that's a little bit more challenging. You can't just read off the graph there because it's kind of a little bit above 12 and you can't estimate. But I do know that the maximum area is when x is 3.5. So I'm going to use the formula this time and put x into my formula, 7 minus 3.5. And then I'm going to simply type that into my calculator. And so it's a bit of a substitution question. I do that, we're going to get 12, so area equals 12.25 meters squared. I've got my answer, and obviously you can see that would have been a bit hard to estimate if I had to use the graph only. Um, that's a really common HSC question, I'm going to say, a very, very common HSC question. Okay, I've added in a bit more of a challenging one. Again, I haven't probably seen one like this in the HSC, this challenging, but certainly you could put, it could be in there. A rectangular patio is constructed so that the length is 8 meters less than the width. Okay, A. Give an example of a length and width that would be possible for this um, patio. All right, so the length is 8 meters length, uh, less than the width. Well, let's say the length is 10 meters. That means that the width would be 8 meters less than that. So 10 minus 8, which would be 2 meters. So my possible part of my, uh, my patio will be 10 meters via 2 meters. I'm guessing it's going to help us to write a general rule for it. Write an equation for the area of the patio in terms of its length x. Well, my area would equal, instead of having um, 10 as my, well, my length, I'm going to put x as my length. Instead of having 2 meters, which is 8 meters less than, I'm going to have x minus 2. That way I can have a generalized rule. I'm going to put here x brackets x minus 2. That's because I'm going to multiply these two um, sides together to get the area. I could leave my answer in that form or I could also put as area equals x squared minus 2x. One of those two answers would be suffice. Okay, next question, C. Construct a graph to compare the area of the patio with its length. I might try to do it over here. Now notice I'm going to be using one quadrant only because I can't have a negative length. Okay, um, now in this case, it, it doesn't tell us what to use it between. Okay, um, but what I might look at there, 
So I'm going to use things like uh, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40. They're my X values. Um, and then I'm going to put my area here. Um, now in this case, it doesn't, it isn't specific about what to use. So um, whatever you use will, will be fine. But I'm just mindful that the next question has an area of 65 square meters. So I want to make sure I've got 65 on here. That would be a good idea. Um, okay, so if it's 10 meters, we've got 10 squared, which is 100. And then we're going to take away 2 times 10, which is 20. So I'm going to get 80. So may maybe what I might do is draw some values here. So X and Y, so I've done 10, 20, 30, and 40. So I'm just going to do a table of values so I can plot them in. So that first one was 80. Then I had um, 20 squared minus 2 times 20, um, 360. Now, I've just noticed that my values are really big, so I'm actually going to modify that. So apologies there. Um, I'm not going to use those values. I'm going to use much smaller ones. So just hold on. I say apologies there. Um, so I've just changed my, my values there a little bit. You can see just to make it more realistic for that particular area. So we've got... Um, my Y values there will go up to 80, so I'm going to do 20, 40, 60, 80, and bigger graph I'd probably use, maybe go up by 10s maybe. Um, okay, we've got 0, 0, we've got um, 2, 0, which probably means that's where it sort of goes under. Um, then we've got 4, 8, which would be an estimation about there, 6, 24, a little bit above. 848 and then we've got 1080 and you can kind of see that's where my graph would be going there and I'd probably stop there it probably goes under and if you think about it um, 1 squared minus 2 is negative 1 so it kind of goes a little bit under and then goes up um, so theoretically you could probably put that there like that and then go from there. Um, it just means that my values basically f less than two are not gonna be useful to us. Um, D, what would be the dimensions of the patio if it had an area of 65? Well, look, mine's not gonna be accurate. Um, I'd go, if I was doing being accurate, I'd go to 70. Okay, draw a line across, that's 70. Then draw a line halfway between 70 and 60. Again, go across, and then I'd go down. I would imagine that my answer is going to be around about 9. Um, and I've just plugged my answer 9 in, um, which is going to be 9 brackets 9 minus 2, which equals 63, which is really close to 65. So it'd be an estimation, something like maybe 9.5 or 9.3 and 9.2, etc. Um, thereabouts but you can see what I'm ta what I'm taking at that um, look that's pretty much it guys again just for a quick recap first of all you'd be asked to sketch the parabola um, via a table of values number two you'll be asked to read off the parabola and sometimes you might be asked to interpret and, and usually it's the maximum value or the minimum value of the graph. Alrighty, um, that's parabolas done. Hope that made sense to you. Just make sure you know that a parabola, anything looks like y equals x squared, is called a parabola and it looks like the happy face graph. Have a great day guys.